Hey, what's up developers? Uh, here we are on day two of the Leap Code 75 problems. And today it looks like it's gonna be some string problems. Uh, isomorphic strings and is subsequence. Both are easy. The exception rates aren't too high on them, probably because people were missing edge cases. So let's click into these and see what we can code up. Uh, given two strings, S and T, determine if they're isomorphic. Two strings are isomorphic if the characters in S can be replaced to get T. Can you just always replace things to get T? <laughs> Does that mean they just need to be this, the same length? No, because foo and bar are false. Uh, all right, let's see here. I guess E needs to be replaced by A, D, G can be replaced by D. So the same letters... All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all occurrences of character must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of characters. No two characters may map to the same character, but a character may map to itself. Uh, input s equals blah, output equals true, input s, duh, duh, duh. we talked about this. Uh, I guess uh, t length always equals s length. Uh, I was going to say maybe there's some condition in which uh, you need to know all of the mappings, but if you had like add and is, maybe you can figure out the d maps to the s based on, you know, some addition of extra characters, but it looks like t is always going to equal s. So that's good. Uh, the strengths could, or the, the strings could be up to. 5,000, 50,000 characters long? I don't, so they're not even like always real words. They're just random uh, bits of ASCII characters. So my kind of immediate thoughts here are use a hash table, uh, iterate through the strings, see if they map to each other, and make sure they're always the same characters. And sorry for the dinging in the background. Let's not worry too much about that. Uh, we're just going to say, uh, I think we need to look through every string anyways, but we do need the index to map it to T. Uh, and remember that string can be treated as character arrays. So for I in length uh, S, and we actually need this as an iterable. So we're going to use the range function to turn this into a iterable. Uh, and uh, care mapping. We'll use a little hash table. Now, am I doing this right i think so uh if I feel like you need a double character map so s maps to t and t maps to s because in the case with egg uh, equals or uh, foo equals bar. If you're actually given bar equals foo, uh, a would map to o, r would map to o, which is actually invalid. Uh, characters in s can be replaced to get t. Now, does it only care about S and T, or does it care if they are um, backwards as well? Which, we can just do the same check, but just in the reverse order. Uh, and I think that's probably perfectly fine. It creates two extra loops, but I think that's okay. Uh, da, 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 da. If not... Uh, all right, so if the character is not in the character map, 
Uh, we're just going to store it in there. Uh, we're going to use SI to look it up, and then we're going to use two TI to insert the value. So that will ensure like E can equal A or G can equal D. Uh, else. Could do an else if. Um, pretty sure it's elif. Uh, car map si not equal to or you could do is not since there's strings um i actually don't remember if you can do this in python or if you have to use not elif not you have to negate it And here we just uh, return false. So basically, if in the example case for foo and bar, um, on the second iteration, we'll see O is not in our character map, and we'll store A. And then on the second iteration, uh, we'll see that O is in the character map, and we'll look it up, and it's not equal to R. So it's not isomorphic. And in that case, we return false. So this will work for foobar. This will also work for egg add. Don't know if it. I forgot that these are uh, uppercase, apparently. I don't think this will work for bar foo, though. So now we can test if it is uh, backwards compatible or not. Uh, output false. Yep. Now, if we input bar foo, does it need to? Okay, so it does need to be backwards compatible. And in this case, we can literally just do the same thing. <laughs> or we could just do a second character map. Well, with the rule of three, you don't really refactor your, until you do something repetitively three times. So I think we can literally just recopy this. It's a little ugly. We could refactor it and clean it up and do something a little smarter. But for the purpose of this, uh, we just swap our T's and our S's. And then that way we make sure that they are, um, it goes two ways. I, I want to combine this. I'm not a big fan of this logic, but I think that's probably why this was at 40%. People didn't think about the backwards compatible case. Uh, and there'll always be a string length according to the constraints in the problem. So we don't have to over-engineer for that. I think we can just submit this. I think we're good. All right, success, accepted, first try. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, the next problem for today is ibs is subsequent. Given two strings s and t, return true if s is the subsequence of t or false otherwise. A subsequence of a string is a new string that is formed from the original string by deleting some, can be none, of the characters without disturbing the relative positions of the remaining characters, i.e. ace is the subsequence of a, b, c, d, because you can delete the b, you can delete the d, um, while ace is not. All right, so my initial thought is to keep two pointers, um, one that points at the S string, one that points at the T string. Uh, is T 
always going to be bigger than S. Doesn't necessarily say anything in the constraints that T is always going to be bigger than S. So, um, we'll just go ahead and do this. Um, if S is bigger than T, then there's no way S can be a subsequent. Uh, because, like, let's say, for instance, you have S equals ABCD, uh, T equals ABC. Uh, obviously, D will never be able to be in T uh, if this is longer. So, in this case, uh, if length S is greater than length T, return false. And we learned uh, capital letters matter. So, we'll do that as capital. Uh, for i in range length t, um, we'll have an s pointer, which equals zero. We'll have a right pointer, which equals zero. I guess we don't actually need a right pointer because uh, the iterator is going to be our right pointer. Is that true? I think so. Um, I guess we'll do a uh, another flag too. Is sub uh, equals false? So let's just uh, you know keep these references the same, so we'll know in our code based on our variable names that right here we're checking is this a subsequent? Uh, it's not, so we just return that what that is, which was initialized to false. So for i in range length t, um, if SSP equals uh, T I uh, SP plus equals one. So this means that we were treading along, uh, let's say, in the case of, you know, uh, S equals ACE. T equals uh, A, B, C, D, E, E. So in the first iteration, we'll see A equals A. Uh, and in that case, we'll kick it to C. Uh, we'll see that B does not equal to C. We don't do anything. But we do iterate through this section. And we see that C equals C. Everything's good there. We move this pointer over to E. Uh, D does not equal E. E does equal E. And then at the end of this, we'll see that we traverse through all of S because our SP will equal four. And then if the length of the SP is greater than uh, length S, then I think that means we saw that it is a subsequent and that the order and all the letters were accommodated for in our T string. And we can just return true. Uh, just to do. If SP equals equals T1, yup. I think that's literally all we need to do. No fancy logic for the else case. And then if uh, SP, we start at zero, we go to one, uh, I guess equals equals length S. Because our indexes are off by one uh, at the end of this, SP will equal three actually, and length S will equal three. Return true. Uh, and then we don't actually need to say uh, else uh, because this return will just fall through the function and not execute anything past it. Uh, but if it does fail this logic check, uh, we'll just return false. And apparently, I forgot a colon. Sometimes little small things like that happen. All right. In the case here where we have ABC and AHV, blah, 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 that, that did pass. I can't imagine. Uh, suppose there are lots of incoming S where K is greater than or equal to, and you want to check one by one. I don't know what that means. 
I want to say this code accommodates most cases of S and T. But if S was an array, uh, then I guess you could write something N squared. I think this works though. String index out of range. Why? <laughs> Oh, okay. I guess in the case, if we <laughs> have found SP already. Okay, um, this is easy enough. We just actually need to move this and then we can break the loop early. So this means we found all of the SPs uh, or all of the subsequent characters inside of T. Yeah, and we just break early. Why does it still think string index is out of range? All right, let's think about this a little bit. Maybe I'll step through some debuggers. I'm not sure. Okay, so actually the last executed input was where if S is a null string, uh, obviously you're not gonna find anything in a null string, so. That is one of the edge cases that we could have checked for. Since in the discussion, it actually, well, not this, the discussion, but in the description, it actually says the length of S can be equal to zero. Uh, the length of T can also equal zero. So that will, this will cover if length is, or length of T is equal to zero. But uh, if not S, How does it want you to treat that? <laughs> uh, if you have a null string, I don't, I don't know. That would be something you would probably want to clarify with an interviewer or a customer. So if S is an null string, does it really count as a subsequent? I don't think so. I guess it does count as subsequent. Man, we are just killing our accuracy ratings here. All right. <laughs> we, sh we should have looked at uh, the whole <laughs> error here between these two runs that you can't actually see. Okay, yeah, between the th this run and this run, uh, because the error actually said what it was. Uh, and then this was just because we weren't sure which flag we should have set it as, um, but we could have clarified that with the interviewer ahead of time. But anyways, this has been day two. The problems have not been so bad, but obviously as we go a little further down, you see more mediums which we should be able to get through the mediums. And then in section three, uh, level three, there's a lot of hard ones. So that'll be fun to get to. Hopefully we can make some progress on those. I may actually study those offline before I start recording, just so we're not stumbling and we create a good pace. But if you've been liking this so far, please leave a subscribe and a like. It definitely helps the channel and lets me know that you guys are interested in learning computer science and working through coding problems together. So thanks. Have a great day. Bye.